Right, if you caught the last episode, you'll know that I managed to get myself a standalone ECU for the MX-5. This one, a second-hand ME221 Gen 1 plug-and-play ECU. Let's get it in the car, shall we? So up to the point of getting this ECU, I was struggling to find something that fit within the theme of this series, which is basically supercharging on a budget. Now I knew from the get-go that I wanted a standalone ECU because there is the option of a piggyback which basically works alongside the stock ECU. This of course makes it cheaper, but from what I'd read, they tend to be quite problematic and you'll never really have the full tuning capability of a standalone ECU. So standalone it needed to be, which basically left me with three options. The two most popular choices being the ME221 and Mega Squirt. These by all accounts are great ECUs, but knew they are close to 700 pounds each, which would have eaten up nearly half the budget for this entire entire build. So if I was going to use one of them, it had to be second hand, no question. Uh, the third and probably least popular choice is the Speeduino plug and play ECU, but currently there is not an off the shelf plug and play version for this Gen MX-5. There will be, according to James at Speeduino, but currently it does not exist. So basically, I was at the mercy of the marketplace. And then thanks to a tip off from my friend Aaron, I spotted this one and grabbed it. And if you didn't see the last episode, a quick budget recap, this ECU with an inlet air temperature sensor set me back 492 pounds. And then since then, I've also spent an extra five pound 95 on some silicone vac line. So running total so far, is £963.08. And, and here is the ME221. Now, this should be a direct plug in replacement for our stock MX5 ECU, but obviously with much more tuning capability than the factory unit, which is what I need as I start to modify this engine to make more power. So, in this episode, I plan to remove the old stock ECU, get this one plugged in. I'm also going to need to upload a fresh base map to it because the map that's on here right now is for a Turbo 1.6, which is no good for this car. And then I'll be crossing my fingers and hoping hoping it starts. And in the middle of all that, I also need to install my AEM AFR gauge and wideband sensor as well. So a lot to look forward to. So I guess I better shut up and make a start. All right, so the ECU in the MX-5 is hidden beneath the passenger footwell here. But before you do anything, disconnect the battery. It could be a very expensive mistake if you don't. So I've been into the boot, disconnected the battery. I've also removed the glove box as well. That's so I'm hoping you'll get a better view of what's going on. Now, let's get this thing out. So this piece of trim needs to be removed here. So this should just pull off. Like that. Now we can pull the door seal back which will allow us to remove this kick plate here. Now there's a little clip that's hidden right up under there. You'll see it. Uh, remove that and then this trim should pull off. Oh, tell me that didn't go down there. Oh, it did. That's the thing right there. Just put everything that you remove somewhere safe. In fact, Mazda made this thing and I've no idea why, but great place to put all the little fasteners. Right, now that clips out, this kick plate should just pull off. Like so. Now we need to roll back the carpet to expose the ECU underneath. Let me go grab something to put on that. Stay put. That's a little bit of polystyrene to remove. Right, now we've exposed the ECU cover plate. Now this thing is designed to protect the ECU and I've already removed this once to check that I was buying the correct ECU for this car. First rule of buying car parts, especially expensive ones like the ME221, is make sure you buy the correct one for your car. So when I got to this point first time around, I was confronted with two rivet-like fasteners here and here, and they were a pain in the backside to remove. Shear bolts, I've since learned they are called, and they've basically got a domed head, so you can't get any purchase on them to unscrew them. So in the end, I had to nick them with a grinder and then use a hammer and chisel to bash them anti-clockwise until they unscrewed. Not fun. 
at all. If you come across them, you'll know exactly what I mean and I feel your pain. But since then, I've replaced them with some standard M8 bolts. So all I need to get this cover plate off now is a 10 millimeter socket and a 13 millimeter socket. Right, I'll remove the two 13 millimeter bolts that I replaced the shear bolts with first. So there's two of these. Right, that's them out. That should leave you with three 10 millimeter fasteners. Two of them are nuts and one's a bolt, I believe. So to get the ECU out now, all I need to do is unplug the connectors from the front of the ECU. There's three in this case, depending on your year of MX-5, there may be two, which is why, again, you need to make sure you buy the correct ECU for your car or else plug and play becomes no plug and certainly no play. Right, that's the three connectors removed. The wiring harness is also clipped into the ECU chassis, so I've just got a pair of long nose pliers to remove them. And there we go, one factory ECU removed. Now I'm gonna take this to the workbench because I need to swap our ME221 chipboard into this case here. Right, here we go. So in the interest of tidiness and keeping things looking as factory as possible, I'm actually gonna swap the ME221 into this case here. Now you may question that move because it's already in a case, but consider this. If you bought an ME221 brand new, the chipboard is all you'd get. You'd have to put it into the factory case anyway. So it may be helpful for some of you if I run through this process as well. Right, I'll put this to one side for a second because the first thing we need to do is get the stock board out of this case. So to get it out, remove these four Phillips head screws on the back of the case here. Right, with those four screws removed, the back plate should just lift off. Exposing the chipboard underneath. Look at that, I have absolutely no idea what that means. Uh, th right, this chipboard is actually held in with a retaining screw here as well. This is not needed on the ME221. We need to get that out as well. Ooh. There we go, that's five screws removed. Now the chipboard should just lift out of here. Right, I've put that stock ECU to one side for now. So that leaves us with the bare ECU chassis. Now, as the ME221 is a plug and play ECU, the factory harness is gonna plug straight into it. You'll notice how the plug sockets on both ECUs are the same. So that's all taken care of. But there's a couple of extra things we need to get to the ME221 when it's in this case here that the stock ECU did not require. The first of these, is a manifold pressure line or MAP line, which is basically a three millimeter or four millimeter vacuum line running from the intake manifold of the engine to this barb on the ECU here. So I need to drill a hole in this case to allow that to pass through. And I also need to drill a hole for the tuning cable. So that's two holes coming right up. Right, there we go, that's my two holes drilled. That one is for the map line, that one is for the tuning cable, and I've also cut down to them with a hacksaw to create a couple of slots. Now that will allow me to install and remove the ECU in the future without having to unplug the lines first. Right, now that's done, we can get the ME221 out of its case and install it into this one. Right, here's the ME221. I'm gonna remove it in much the same way as I removed the stock board and then just swap it into that case. ME221. Okay, this will just lift out and should fit straight in like that using the factory fasteners. But before I button that up, I need to get my tuning cable plugged in and the map line plugged in. So the tuning cable I'm going to plug into this socket here and then the map line goes in to this barb here. 
Right, with those two lines installed, the ME221 can be dropped into the factory case. Uh, and if I've drilled my holes in the correct location, then these lines should just slot into them. Perfect. Right now, all I need to do is put the lid back on, screws in, button it up, and then it can go back in the car. Okay, we're back in the passenger footwell and we can plug the ME221 back into the stock wiring harness. Look at that, you'd never know the difference, would you? Now that is pretty much everything taken care of on this end, but unfortunately that's only half the battle because now I need to run the map line into the engine bay and connect that up to the inlet manifold. And then I've got the whole AEM, AFR gauge and wideband sensor to plumb in as well. So still plenty to do. Okay, next up is the map line. And to get it through into the engine bay, I've chosen to use this grommet right at the back here. So I've pushed it through there and then it's gonna be a case of going into the engine bay, maneuvering it around the engine to the inlet manifold and connecting it up to one of the many spare vacuum takeoffs that the MX-5 thankfully has. And once I've done that, that is the map line taken care of and we are one step closer. Okay, that's about it for part one of this ECU installation. The next big thing I need to do is get this AEM AFR gauge installed and the wideband sensor plumbed in as well. Now, I'm going to dedicate an entire episode to that job because there's quite a few aspects to it. So if you want to see that, I'll put a link on the screen right now. You can click that to take you to that episode. Or if you prefer, just skip that bit and join me back here for part two of this ECU installation where I'm going to be uploading a base map to the ME221 and attempt a first startup. So if you want to skip to that one, click this link right here. See you in a mo.